So what's been killing me the past few months in particular, you better believe I'm happier than ever. Again, I'm, I'm doing things I didn't even know I had the ability to do in this musical stuff that I'm, I, that's how I'm, that's how I'm, the, I think the reason it's coming out of me is because that's the only way I can share this love right now. Because interestingly, all of those that have been closest to me, specifically in the past five years, there's hardly anybody that is able to be in my corner and to support me right now and to share in all of this magnificence coming true. And I get it. I so get it. I don't want anybody to, I, I, people, I want everybody to feel exactly how they feel. But to, when you make peace with your past, that doesn't mean you still got to live in your present and go forward. And I've got amazing supportive people in my life supporting what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm having to focus on those people. But what's still new is that, that innate desire to have those that are closest to you be able to believe in you, to be able to support you, to be able to love you, even if what you're doing, they don't understand it, and especially if they're being hurt by it. So I get it. God, do I get it. But I can't tell you what that's been like. When I went home in March to say goodbye to my grandmother, my last living relative, someone who I never had a relationship with, mostly because, in all honesty, I think part of me blamed her for my dad's actions because no one, I try, I don't know what, I don't know what demons are in my dad's past, but I know he was doing the best he could He's, everybody in my life is doing the best they could. Dad did what he had to do, and that's okay. But I think I partially blamed my, my grandmother and my dad's family on a subconscious level. And as such, my relationships with those family members, once we got into adulthood, were absolutely affected. So I went home to say goodbye to this grandmother, had the best interaction with her in my life. It was awesome. It was awesome. And I had a couple of other really great interactions. One with my little cousin that my mom babysat once or twice a week when I was home healing. And at the time he was only three and a half. And that little dude, that little dude and his sister, more than any kids in my life, helped me heal. And when my cousin, his mom, asked me if I would babysit him, one of the days I was home, oh my God, I'm like, are you kidding me? Yes, I will babysit him for sure. And my day with that little dude was a highlight of that week. And thank God for it because... The rest of that week, well, I also had an awesome day, an awesome day with one of my middle school friends, the best, like six hours with her that were amazing. Those two interactions and the interaction with my grandmother, thank God, because the rest of the trip was pretty much the hardest thing I've ever had to go through because I saw no fewer than 14 or 15 other family members, including cousins, their spouses, and aunts and uncles, and a family who knows everything going on. I mean, every, you know, it's a note, we're a typical family, you know, all the God, every 
everybody knows everything that's going on. And I hadn't been home since I left there two years ago, and everybody knew, they saw my transformation. Like, everybody saw how happy I was. Like, and then I went to Seattle, and everybody knew I had the greatest year. You know, like, I, I'm not, all you gotta do is pay attention to Facebook, and you can see it, right? So a family with a history of always asking how things are and, 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 and you know, and inquiring, no one knew what to say. So it was just real superficial. And while I did lose it completely with my immediate family while I was home, I kept, I was able to just remind myself everybody's doing the best they can, everybody's doing the best they can, Unconditional love, you know, Alice, you just, just ride with this. Just remember and trust everything that you're doing because you know what you're doing is coming ultimately for the first time in my life. Taking care of myself emotionally first. Knowing that no longer was I going to accept other people's unresolved things that that I finally understood the concept of boundaries and how to put up and say nope I know what's mine are you kidding me all I've ever done is apologize on behalf of way more than what was mine in any situation of my entire life I'm incapable incapable of putting anything on somebody else that they that that's not really theirs I, I I can't do it but now I know how to only accept what's mine and the fact is the only thing I've ever done I is love everybody in my life and and, and like just it's been innocent almost it's almost been like especially now like I'm just like dude more than ever I understand let's leave all that garbage all that drama in the past I'm telling you I got the new secrets of life let's let's just make peace with all of it and go forward you're not gonna believe how awesome a life you can create for yourself like that's why what I want to scream to everybody in my life with whom I've only shared drama and sadness. And what's been so, it's, 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 I, it's been the most fascinating thing to observe that here I am happier than ever, looking and feeling better than ever because our outside worlds reflect our inside worlds. And I, never believed until I got home to Michigan, until I healed. I didn't ever think I could be this happy and this at peace. Like when I say my dreams have come true, right there, that's all I ever wanted. When you've been in misery for 25 years, feeling guilty every time you're happy, knowing and being trained to believe that the next shoe, that the shoe is going to drop at any time. That, you know, not having any self-worth. So anytime I got anywhere close to anything that's perceived as successful, namely money, you know, it, it or prestige or anything like that, like it was drilled into me that that was not because of how many others out there were still hurting, how many others out there were still all the injustices that me achieving some sort of success somehow was unfair to them. That's how what I internalized, and I didn't have to, I don't think I'm like alone in that. I, I look at my brothers, that's, that was, there are so many parts of this. And it is very personal right now. And I am moving through that finally by getting 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 it out now why it's personal because the people out there in this world and there are 
millions and millions in our country alone that are suffering from this kind of hurt and other kinds of hurt. I know I can generally help anyone make it through and put that all in their past and get them, help get them truly to our present and move forward, no matter what age, no matter what it, I know it, I know it. But I can't do that and not talk about my own experience. And I can't talk about my own experience without appearing, without talking about my immediate family and without appearing to be without appearing to at least all my family members like I'm this horrible person. Because I know that's what a lot of them are gonna believe and feel. I know it's what they already believe and feel. And I accept that because I have to. Because me not moving forward and talking about the real depths of suicide thoughts, of having the knife at your wrists, of hating yourself physically so much that you weren't living for the better part for a decade, a decade. I lost a decade of my life because of how much I hated myself physically. And I hated myself physically because that was the outward manifestation of all the messages that were literally told to me beginning when I got, when I stopped helping as much around my home. And my, my exhausted, depressed, understandably so, my worried and anxious mother didn't know how to handle what was going on and she didn't feel as if she could really ask for help. And it was all because of the divorce. And the last time I checked, <laughs> The divorce rate is well over 50% in this country. So to believe that my feelings were isolated, I mean, isn't that what we always tell people? You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. God, do I know I'm not alone with this history. And I believe that in addition to the kids, to the actual kids, the ones 18 and under, 20, 22 and under. I know there are a ton of adults out in this world as well. I dare say millions and millions and millions that also had some sort of experience like this. Maybe it was physical abuse. I've never had physical abuse. But the emotional hey, abuse is abuse. Just like addiction is addiction and suffering is suffering and what made this past two years so particularly challenging especially the year at Microsoft was that statistically speaking a lot of those people don't come from broken homes because statistically speaking you can't achieve and get anywhere near your full potential if you are burdened by these sorts of experiences. I was lucky. I had sports. I had sports and the discipline of sports. That is why I didn't turn to drugs. That's why I didn't, you know, turn to crime and get in trouble. Do you know how many 